Alright, welcome back everybody to Let's Play Parasite Eve 2. I'm your host, Alexander Frost, and this is Episode 9. Let me get a quick rundown and check to see what all I've got. I'm pretty sure I've got enough. Yeah, I've got enough ammunition. Yeah, I remember. We're ready. Alright then, off we go. We're going to clean out the water tower. Swing through to the GNR saloon. Hmm. Let's use the slide trick. Slide, 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 slide. Don't wake up. Damn it. Hmm. Well, I'll fry two of them at least. Coming for me. Alright, well that worked out fairly well. I forgot I had a crap ton of BP. I completely forgot. I'm not complaining either. I'm happy about that. Alright, let's clean up. Wait, wait, what's in here? Yeah, I also forgot to mention, the scavengers do like to get down at your feet and start gnawing on them, sort of like the rats. No problem, though. Nothing we can't handle. What was that? You stuck there, buddy? Nope. Step out of the room, wait for him to pass through. And this little dude is stuck. You could sit here and watch him for hours. He'll never get out of there. Which begs the question, why was he in there? Yes. I will take that. MP boosts are always welcome in my book. Always welcome. Okay, let's go clear out the pathway behind the water tower and move on to the driveway. Why am I talking in a whisper? There is no one else here, it is only me! And the, you know, NMCs. Oh, bats. Oh, wait. This is exactly what I got the flare for. Ah! Situation resolved. And no one got hurt. Don't! Ay, 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 I forgot. I don't think you could manually use the flare anyway, but still, kinda sucks if you accidentally use it. <laughs> okay. Head out this way. How much you want to bet we're gonna run into more bats? Called it. Well, again, that's what the flare is for. I mean, what the fuck else was I gonna use it for? Plus, I think I have another one sitting in my trunk. That went well. There's more bats, aren't there? No, no. This, dear children, is where we encounter another new enemy. If I remember correctly. And I did. This children is called a Zebra Stalker. It's chameleonic and has the ability to turn invisible, but the best way to kill it is to wait for it to turn uninvisible. It will advance. But when it turns invisible, it turns invisible in the exact same spot. It never moves. So killing it and keeping it from... Oh, Lucky 7's on EXP. Killing it and keeping it from attacking you is simple as just shooting it. Whenever you shoot it, it tries to disappear, but shoot it before it can, it reappears. 
fire works best on them, though. And to be honest, unless you are surrounded, there's really no reason for you to take any damage from Zebra Stalkers. The Grey Stalker was far more threatening. But now that we've seen him, we'll start encountering them more. Okay. And uh, much like the Scorpions, the Zebra Stalkers are ambush fighters. I don't know what to do with this. Because if I pull the trigger and fire, screw it. Alright, apparently they couldn't hear it. And I am not going to argue with that. They're too busy eating something. The rocks are too important to notice me. If you were too stupid, if you were too busy eating rocks to notice me, then your death was your own fault. That's all I'm going to say about it. I completely forgot to turn the lights on in that room. Of course I did, because I had no reason to go back in that room except to clear it out. But now that I could see that it's dark as hell... Oh, I do not like running through here when it's so dark. I mean, you guys can't see but half of it. cluster of them back here. Hmm. Let's see if I can catch them. Yeah, I can catch them both. Once again, they seem too busy. They're too busy eating to even bother with me. And, uh, I'm okay with that. I'm super okay with that. Ah, uh, yes. Before I forget, in the last comment, someone said, So Aya has the ability to burn people. Yes. Yes, she does. And we will explain it in Pyrokinesis. It activates the mitochondria in the hands, emitting a flash wave of heat, which then can be used against targets to sustain burn damage. The difference between Aya and Eve from the first game is that Eve manipulated the mitochondria within others to do what she wanted to do, oftentimes reducing them to their cell cellular states and melting them into puddles of goo. Aya could do the same thing. She chooses not to. But whenever she lit Kyle Madigan's hand on fire, I believe it was purely a reflex action, which makes sense. I mean, if you had that power and you woke up and found someone pointing a gun in your face, you'd probably do the same thing. I also suspect that she has the ability to moderate it, because as we saw, Kyle's hand had sustained no damage. She just burned it enough to make him drop his hand. Drop his hand. To drop the gun. So when you think about it, it's kind of terrifying just how much control she has over it. She could literally light you on fire, cause you pain, but not leave a scratch on you. That's kind of scary. Get up this rope. Get up the rope. But I guess when you think about it, I is terrified of her own power, just as much as other people are terrified of them using it on her. Or her using it on them, rather. So it would make sense that she not do that. Ambush? Shit. Ow. Alright. 
There it is. No, no, let go of my foot. Let go. Turn around, turn around. Alright, for some reason, I thought the garage was not... Ah, you're supposed to be dead. Fucker. Okay, for some reason, I thought the garage was not going to be full of enemies. No, 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 no. I realize what I was thinking now. I remember that the garage was a hot zone. The junkyard is an ambush site. When I go out there, I'm going to run into a couple of zebra stalkers. I had the junkyard and the garage mixed up. I thought the junkyard was going to be lit up as a hot zone and that I would be ambushed in the garage by zebra stalkers, which I will eventually at some point. I got them mixed up and it cost me. This is what happens when you forget key details like that or walk into a fight unprepared. You lose a lot of health. <clears throat> now that'll have to do. The Zebra Stalkers are not exactly challenging enemies. They're only dangerous if they actually manage to climb on you, and as long as you keep away from them, you'll be fine. Of course, they are going to try and double-team me here. I thought he would turn invisible before he got anywhere near me. There, simple. How close am I to leveling up another ability? Not nearly as close as I would like. I could reactivate Necrosis to get back my MP, but I kind of want to get Energy Shot and Healing up to level 2 before I do that. I'll only level up Necrosis later. So, dear children, that is what recoveries are for. There, now I'm in good shape again, and I'll just recover MP as we go. So yes, the hot zones are clear. Dry zone, dry zone, there we go again. Maybe I should just call it dry zone from now on and be done with it. Dry zone is safe for now. Gonna be honest, your skill at stopping people from getting in kind of sucks. Does it mean you waited for her to actually walk in the door, walk past your peripheral vision to stand here, on this spot, before turning around to point a shotgun? I mean, if you really wanted to be defensive about it, you would have put the desk farther back in the room. You know, just my personal thoughts on the matter. But anyways, it's nice to see you're alive and safe and have some defensive skill at least. Now I'm not going to ask him about uh, lending me the car because to be honest I don't need it just yet. You got any more info about the shelter before we go on? I'll take that as a no. I need from you good sir if possible. First I need the ammo. As much of it as you can give me. Thank you. Secondly, now I know I said I was going to get the M9 bayonet at one point or another, but I have decided against it, and here's why. As with all attachments that you can put on the M4, putting an attachment on the gun means you can use the R2 button to activate it, but you lose the ability to fire single shots, which, as you saw when I was fighting the scavengers, came in handy and prevented me from wasting ammunition when I was finishing them off. Now technically, I wouldn't have to worry about that with the M9 because it's still a single strike, but I'd have to be right on top of my opponent. So, that said, I am not going to buy the M9 because, hey, I already know how to fight without it. I'm also not going to get the PO8 and collect that special ammunition clip. It's tempting, and I could go back and do it, well, it's a mod for quite a while I could go back and do it, but I will not. That's still a piece of crap. This is what we came for. Now, finally, we need grenades. I'd say about 50 would probably do it. That's 8, 
12, 16, 20, 24. I'm bad at math. Okay, um, after a little bit of deliberation and just plain feeling dumb as hell on camera because I hate the math, I'm going to run with 40 grenades for now because I've got more sitting in the, uh, sitting in the motel room as well as in the car trunk. And I will be making sweeps through there anyways. I'm not even going to use the grenade pistol right now. I'm going to be dropping it off. There is one thing I kind of want to do though. But it might not even matter, I don't know. It all depends on a certain event that's going to transpire later. Alright, we've got 40 grenades. Next thing we need to do, Mr. Douglas, I need a car. I mean, if you could find it in your heart. Uh -huh. So it has to be fixed. Alright, here's the thing. Mr. Douglas has clearly been filling it up as he wants, which tells me that sending off Aya to go find gas is basically saying, stay out of my way. Because she, he could go and fill it up anytime he wanted to, and has been for a while. Now, I don't know if he's actually gone and filled it up at night, which would be another thing altogether, but it's basically busy work for her. Now, we need... Alright, I'll just lay it, I'll, I will just lay it out for you and not sugarcoat it. The gas can we need is in the loft. Unfortunately, the loft is locked. He just gave us the key to the hotel lobby. And inside the hotel lobby is the Bronco Master Key, which will unlock every door in the hotel. So that means those two hotel rooms that are locked on the first floor, whoops, the loft and that hotel room, which I've and that one southern hotel room, which, if I remember correctly, also has a belt pouch in it. So off we go. A quick interim save, because I don't know what I'm going to expect out there. So we're going to save over gas station one. Bam, there it is. I feel better knowing that I am prepared. I've got the ammo, I've got everything I need. I should also note, children, that in the instruction manual, not the instruction manual, in the strategy guide, it says that I am no longer able to buy items from Mr. Douglas up until I leave. In fact, actually, no, this is the last time I can buy items from Mr. Douglas. This is, in fact, a fallacy. When Mr. Douglas goes to work on the truck, you will not be able to come back here and use the, uh, telephone here. So the only telephone you will have available will be the one in your room. Once you give Mr. Douglas the gasoline, however, you will be able to buy items from him because he will stay in the garage. So you'll still be able to get items you need, it's just that it'll move and you'll have one less save point to worry about. So you'll need to be a little more careful while you're wandering around, that's all. No big deal. Okay, now comes the ambush. If you could call it that. Hi. I can shoot you. If I remember correctly, they're gonna come at me in two. He's dead. Don't have enough ammo. Wait, I just remembered. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, turn invisible. Just remember. This is the exact reason why I put the rifle ammo in my attachments, so I can reload. I just never have a need to, except for situations like this. 
See, I only had nine bullets left, and I would have been three shy of doing what I needed to do. Oh, that's nice. Nice EXP. I like it. If I remember correctly, I can also start putting things in the truck, too. No? Not yet. Once I give him the oil, not the oil, the gas, he'll be all like, yeah, 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 you can start putting stuff in the truck. So, be kind of picky and choosy about what you put where. How do I want to do this? Oh, well, there's no need for me to go to the car just yet. Yeah, I'll grab the grenades from the car whenever I go to get the gas. But first, I have to go get the key, and then I have to get the jerry can. <sighs> also, there are two hints here that I'm going to take a moment and show off, since there's no risk of attack that I'm aware of. A portrait of a well-dressed man, Doc Holliday, born in 1851, died in 1887. In the next room is a portrait of Wyatt Earp, who died the same year what was born at a different time. So, if my math is correct, or at least my memory is correct, that means that Doc Holliday died at the age of 30. I could just grab a calculator and find out. That's a good idea. Hold on, let me get to the picture first. Get to the picture. Okay. Do the math here, real quick, grabbing my cell phone. Calculator, all right. Ah, no, no, I was incorrect. 1887, 1887 was when Doc Holliday died, and he was born in 1881. He was born in 1851, I'm sorry. 36. I'm remembering something wrong here. Okay. So Wyatt Earp was born in 1848, but died in 1929. So we subtract 1848 from that. Huh. You know, I am very bad at math today because I am not getting the answers I'm supposed to get. Basically, Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday, those are the answers to a puzzle that I'm about to solve. It was their ages. 30 and 33 is what it was supposed to be, but somehow I'm math failing on camera for all you to see. The answer is 3037. 30-33. And if by some stroke of luck... Oh, I forgot. By unlocking the hotel lobby, you do gain access to another telephone, so that's kind of nice. There's a memo. When death came to Tombstone, Holiday was 30, and Wyatt Earp was... Oh... I was incorrect. Why don't I just consult the guide so I don't look like an idiot, because I'm pretty sure I'm correct on this. Okay. The answer is not the ages of when they died, but the ages of when they both fought at the OK Corral. The year for the OK Corral was 1881. So, we already have one answer there. Doc Holliday was 30 when it happened. And Wyatt Earp was 33. Now that I'm done being an idiot, Oh, wait, there's a memo, another memo here, if I remember correctly. Handwritten memo, problems with the cash register, don't forget. Press number before entering the four-digit code and press total when you're done. Can't remember the number? Check the still, and you will. Some irritated manager probably wrote this for the part-time help. Fortunately, this helps us out a great deal. So, push the button. Yes, it's a cash register. 
That's not correct. Yes, it is. 30. 33. Total. And there's no money. And even if there was money, Aya wouldn't take it because she's just that moral. Excellent! And that also sparked off a hot zone. Who knew cash registers were so dangerous? So, how do I want to do this? I think the smart thing to do would be to go backwards to the junkyard, clear it out, then come back, clear out the general store in that back area, then come back and take care of the... No, I'll take care of the rooms first. Damn it. Trying to be thorough and careful about this, but the game is being like, LOL! How do I want to do that? Alright, you know what? I'm just going to go clear out the general store, the back alley first. Then I'll come back and do the rooms. The rooms upstairs. Then I'll go... Uh, I'll leave the junkyard. Here's a bright idea. How about I check the guide so I know whether or not I can afford to leave the junkyard alone? Because if I can leave the junkyard alone and come back and clear it without it being overwritten by another hot zone, then all will be well. You know, I mean, I have this guide and everything, and... Okay. Let's see here. La 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 la... Okay. Hot zone alert. Da 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 da. That... puts up the junkyard. It looks like the next hot zone is not going to spring up until I give Mr. Douglas the gas. And all the hot zones that I can see here don't cover the junkyard, so I can leave it alone for now. Alright, now that that's out of the way, I'll go clear out the alleyway in the general store, come back, take care of the bottom rooms, then the upstairs rooms, and the loft, get the gas can, and we will call it a video. There. Plan established. Let's go. I'm not going to bother using that telephone. I don't need it right now. And then I'm going to go out and get myself horribly murdered and feel bad for not taking... <laughs> okay. Now that I know what the fuck I'm doing... Now, if I am correct... Not in the general store, but in that back alley, I think that will be the last time we encounter, uh, desert chasers in dry field, I think. No, it's not. No, it's not. Wait. There we go. Just remember that we were going to get an down here. You know, I don't know why they don't attack me unmasked. It makes no sense. Speaking of making sense, I'm going to go on ahead and drop off the... No, no, you not drop it off. There are grenades in here that I'm going to pick up. That's what I meant to say. The firefly rounds, I will drop off. No, I won't. I will take these firefly rounds with me. In fact, I will take the R-slug rounds with me, too. And these six grenades. There. Um... Sure, I'll take the flare. Because my next stop... Well, my next stop isn't going to be... in the hotel room, but, uh... No, hell. The next time I stop in my hotel room, I will be dropping off a lot of this stuff. Oh, hi! How you doing up there? Enjoying yourself? Wow, you just... No. I think they're a little bit vulnerable in the backsides, too. I'm not sure. Oh, well. Doesn't matter. Do I want to grab those colas and such from there? Nah. I'm fine. Okay, Desert Chasers. Oh, 
Oh, goody. Goody, goody, goody. I am blinded. Pain. I, I, damn it. Whoa. Ow, I thought it was out of the way. Should have healed. I should have healed. I will. Keep it going. Because now I am going to bring healing up. <sighs> I just gotta get energy shot up and I'll be good to go. Might as well just go in this front door here, right? For some reason it wouldn't let me target the one over there, which is what I was trying to do. At least they had the common decency to stay in the light for the camera. I mean, that was nice of them. I don't know, I might grab that cola. No, I don't want to, not yet. Not just yet. I'm pretty sure, how many items do I have? 17? 18? 16! Well, I don't know how to count. Fuck it, I will grab that cola. gonna put it in my armor. There's a very good reason why I'm not gonna. You'll see it. Go out the door. I love you, Aya, but you're a little silly sometimes. It's cute, though. I will, I will grant you that. It is cute. How you think you can walk through walls and such. Now, I have no idea what to expect in these rooms. I'm willing to bet it's probably going to be strangers. Or scavengers. Or absolutely nothing because this is the wrong damn room. God. Good job. Easy room is easy. I don't know why you got back up, dude. After that, I just would've been like, fuck it, you win, I'm just gonna stay down. Back at full health, back at full MP, anything in here? On the top shelf? Oh! Yes, please. Portrait over here? No, I think it's over here. Nope, and there wouldn't be a portrait in the bathroom because that would be just silly. City, sir. Probably next door. If not, then it's upstairs. It's in one of these three rooms. What's up? Yeah, I realized using the fireball was overkill, but uh, I don't care. Okay, the portrait must be upstairs. Because it's not in here. Or is this it? Desert landscape painting. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Enough with the introspection, dear. Wait, is this it? Worked up a young man, Billy the Kid, 1859 to 1881. Lived 21 years, shot 21 people. 
Okay, okay, no, this is the room. So, where we can see ourselves. Well, that's easy. The only place we can see ourselves is in a mirror. Right? Right? Well, come on, where's the mirror? Okay. This is the room, isn't it? Maybe I'm mistaken and it's the one upstairs. Wouldn't be the first time I was wrong. Won't be the last. Won't be last. Oh wait, there's enemies up here. Zebra stalkers? You know what works really good on you guys? Fire. Hmm. I think he forgot that I was aimed in the right direction. I don't blame him. I would have thought the same thing. I would have been like, I'm totally safe. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh crap. The stealth thing works better if you move after you've turned invisible, because then I don't know where you are. That's the point of stuff. Ah, hell. Wait. That's what this is for. Except that I was too late. Well, no, I could still sort of aim myself. Right, I don't want to waste any more ah, fuck, it just wasn't me. Just wait that it's seven, that's what it's there for. Oh fuck! Okay. I'll take it. Right, now where is this damn portrait? Is this it? Beautiful woman wearing men's clothing, Calamity Jane. Well, this might be it. Wait, 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 I remember. I think it said female. I remember. Nothing in this locker, but... Build pouch! The mirror's been smashed. Silver nitrate shards everywhere? Greener, a little shinier. Okay, um... One moment, folks. Okay, I am correct. It is this room. Apparently, there is a hidden message in the glass. I'm just not finding it. I'm reflected twice in the mirror. Come on, there is a hidden message here. Find it. Oh, come on. There's nothing in Okay, it's gotta be right here. See the motel stairs. How do you. Alright, since the game is being retarded, I will just read what the riddle is supposed to be and then give the answer because I know what it is. As soon as I can turn to the correct page. Okay. Here, come on already. Get to the right page. Here we go. Solve my riddle if you dare. Organs of sense under bristly hair. Seen with how many silver plates in the Broncos lair. Once you know, go from there to a jet black door near the moon's cold glare. What it's asking for are the number of mirrors in the hotel, which is seven. Oh, and I was wrong. The answer to the previous one was uh, eight barrels. 
not 7. Well, I didn't say 7 before, I said 9 or 10. Brrr. So, with that all said and done, the last thing to do is to go into the loft. Conveniently devoid of enemies, we think. But you can clearly see in the reflection, or not in the reflection, in the light, there is something waiting for us, but we can't deal with it right now. Now one would think immediately to grab the jerry can here, but right here is what we came for. Jet black door, it's underneath the moon's cold glare because of the skylight. This is what we've been looking for. Turn the dial. Oh yes, let's spin. So the answer to the first riddle was four urinals. The answer to the second riddle was four telephones. I might have gotten the two backwards. The answer to the third number, the third riddle, was seven barrels. And then the answer to the final... No, I got it backwards. I got it backwards. It was four, four, seven, eight. No, four, four, eight, seven. Motherfucker, I am just on a roll feeling dumb as hell today. Once more, I defer to the guide and its infinite wisdom of being correct all the time. Yes, it is 4487. It is 4487, children! Four urinals, four phones, or whatever it was, eight barrels, and seven mirrors. And what is our reward for having gone through all this trouble of figuring out riddles and wandering around this... A bottle. A bottle of what? Well, children, this is one of several items. Holy water. This is one of several items that will increase Aya's basic overall stats and make her stronger than she is. And in this case, the holy water... As soon as I can pull it up. Come on. The holy water will reduce all incurred damage by 25% if we add it as an attachment to our armor. If we decide to actually use it as an item, it will increase one of our water PE abilities by one level. Do not use. Put it here. So if we had chosen to use it, I believe metabolism would have gone up, but if it was already at level 3, then it would have pushed healing up to level 3. But if healing were already up, pushed up to level 3, then it would have unlocked a third ability. Once you get two abilities in any one class uh, pushed up to level 3, you unlock a third ability, which I will be showing off, but not for a while, because it's deathly expensive. So, there are several other items that we can get later on that will improve our stats. And here's a gas can. All right. We got the jerry can, and what happens now? Ambush. A big ambush. But you know what? That's what combustion is made for. I know you're there. Damn it. Are you stuck? Well, I can't use it anyway. There we go. Reload the gun. Come back around and kill this fool. Nope. No invisible. Stop it. Now we have the gas can. So all that's left for us... Oh, what'd we get? What'd we get? Do I want to use it? Can I use it? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I cannot take carry any more items, so I must discard it, unfortunately. So the only thing left for us to do now is to save the game and call it a video. And this one did go on a bit longer than I'd originally planned, partially because of my math fail, and partially because I was too busy trying to think how I wanted to roam through things. I kept deferring to the guide. I should have strategized and planned first of all. I can leave my extra things here. Why, yes, yes I will. First of all, uh, we're going to put the grenade pistol here because we don't need it right now. We're also going to...
gonna put the grenades in here because we don't need those right now. All of them. The R slug rounds and the belt pouch. What? Oh, I can't put any more items in here. Oh man. Well, shoot. No, no. It'll work out because once I get fuel, there are no more hot zones. Once I get the fuel, well, there's the one up at the junkyard, but I can do that later. Once I get the fuel and give it to Mr. Douglas, I'll be able to put stuff in the truck. So I can put the belt pouch, the flare, the R slug rounds, and the firefly rounds back in the truck. So it'll be fine. It's just fine. It's just fine. And I thought I had more grenades. Doesn't matter. Alright folks, that is it for this episode. Next time, we will go and get the gas. We will clear out the final hot zone in Dry Field. And then we will make for the shelter. Until next time, everyone!